Hey guys, Modern Day Viking here. I just finished making a set of my very own stall bars. So stay tuned in this DIY video and I'll show you how you can make a very set of your own. Check it out. All right, so here we are, back before it all started. And this is the space that I've got to work with where I'm going to make and install my stall bars. Roughly it's about 800 millimeters by two meters high. I've already got a bar up the top here um, that I use to do strict toes to bar, so whatever. So once my stall bars are installed, I'll just bring that bar out and then I won't need to have a bar at the top of my stall bars that sits proud to do toes to bar. But anyway, there we go. So I've already gone ahead and drawn the plans. I'll show you what those look like and then let's get together and go and build this thing. So here's a set of the plans that I scratched up quickly. Obviously everyone's is going to be different in terms of the space that you've got to deal with but it's a good idea just to get everything written down on paper with all your dimensions, spacing, so everything makes sense. Okay, in terms of equipment and tools for the job, you're going to need a miter saw, an impact driver if you've got one, a battery drill, a hammer drill, a spirit level, a set square, a pencil and a marker, a tape measure, um, a spade bit and any drivers for the screws you're going to need. And then obviously I realise not everyone has access to this equipment, but you do if you do have a friend that's handy with this sort of stuff, there's not much you can't get done if you offer to help out purchase all the equipment and obviously front up with a carton of beer. Okay on to the materials needed for the job. We're going to, I use some 90 by 45 bits of timber for the uprights and then for the stay bars I use some Tasmanian oak which was 28 mil thick and you want to get something that's quite strong and durable because this is going to be taking a lot of the load for any exercises you do on here. Lastly is the fixings and brackets depending on how you want to fix it to the wall will determine what brackets you have but these are the ones I use and then obviously I've got my screws and my wall anchors or masonry bolts okay so I've just gone ahead and measured the two uprights I need to cut mine two meters to length in height this is my waist just a little tip I picked sort of the straightest bits of uh, timber I could find. There's a bit of a knot here so that's going to be on my waist side of the cut so it's not going to interfere with any of my stall bars or anything like that. Uh, just quickly another thing guys I have got it clamped at either end uh, so when I cut them they're not going to move. I'm going to cut them together at the same time so the uprights are going to be exactly the same length. Just make sure guys if we are doing anything that we are safe and here I've got my safety glasses on and my hearing protection. If you lose these you never get them back. Okay so <clears throat> another little tip here what I've done is using the off cut from for the uprights I've made I've cut four blocks and all I'm gonna do is I've got my dowel here that's going to be the bars and instead of measuring and cutting each one individually I'm just going to measure and mark one and I'm going to sandwich all three together like this leveling the ends up clamping them together and then that way all three will stay together they won't move and then all my cuts are going to be exact so there's not going to be any play or any tolerances or any mismatches across the whole lot of the stay bars they'll be exact and precise
Okay, so <clears throat> all the timber has been cut, so all that's left to do now is go ahead and mark the uprights for where the bars are going to go. So let's get that done. I've worked out that I'm going to start roughly 100 mil from the floor, which will give me an even spacing of 225 mil, all the way up to the top for a total of nine bars. So again, I've gone ahead and clamped my two uprights together. So I'm just going to mark one of the uprights and then I'm going to just with the set square go across and then mark them both at the same time and this is going to keep everything precise. I'm going to mark on the back side of the upright so these will be facing the wall when I'm finished. Um, I'll pick sort of the ugliest side of the timber where there's some rough edges and some knots <clears throat> and I can go ahead and mark everything and then really I'm not going to worry about painting it. I like the look of the raw timber and you won't see any of the markings when it's done. And I'll also show you further into video why I'm marking the back side of the woods just to give the bars some extra strength um, for the stall bars. So let's go ahead and do some marking. Here you can see where I've marked the back side of the uprights, roughly 10 mil in, to lock the stall bars in later on, which we'll see in the video. Okay, so I've just finished marking uh, the back side <clears throat> and the insides of the uprights um, for where my stall bars are going to go. So ideally, if you're doing this, you want a, a drill press. Um, that's going to keep everything straight and square. I do not have one, so I'm going to be doing it by hand. Um, and then, yeah, with the drill press, you'd be able to also set the depth of the hole I'm about to cut. So, guys, what I've done is I've just gone ahead and with the black marker, I've drawn a line across where I want to stop. All the holes have been drilled now for the dowel. Now, <clears throat> when I picked the dowel, I just basically picked what felt <clears throat> good in my grip and just going by the pictures that I had Googled on Google Images. Uh, so this looks about right, this feels right. Uh, and this is 28.6 millimeters to be exact or roughly an inch and a quarter. Um, which actually worked out perfectly because I had a 28 mil spade bit as you saw previously and with the little bit of play when you're drilling these things fit nice and tight and snug so just keep that in mind when you're picking your dowel roughly about an inch and a quarter so I'm guessing um, and then yeah just make sure that your spade bit or whatever you use to drill in your holes is going to match. So if you think it's going to be a little bit tight, that's probably a good thing. Uh, and then your dowel will slot in nicely. What I'm going to do now is just glue, put the glue in each one of the holes. I'm going to knock in the dowel all the way on these ones. And then if there is a little bit of differences between the holes that I have drilled, the other upright, when it goes on top, if there is a little bit of play on top, that won't matter. The glue will take up the slack. Uh, and then I am going to actually be screwing from the back side of the bar just so these things aren't going to twist at all and everything is strong, which is why I went ahead and marked the back side of the uprights as well. So let's get to some gluing. Okay guys, so when we are 
doing our gluing just make sure we are being generous and we're getting plenty of glue in there to help hold the stay bars with the upright now flat on the ground you can now go on ahead and knock in all the stay bars with that done it's time to glue the last of the uprights Okay, so this is probably one of the more difficult parts of the job. This was a bit of trial and error for me. I realised the glue was running um, with the upright coming down, so I went and tried it on the grass here, as you can see, sideways. That wasn't really happening for me either. So then I finally found that if the upright without the bars was on the ground first, I could gradually go along, line up the stay bars, and then knock them in and found that this was the best way to do it and obviously you're going to need some help doing this lastly just knock them all in firmly here I am using a large hammer and a bit of wood to not mark the uprights Okay, so there we go, this is uh, a few failed attempts at the beginning to get the dowels in as the bars, but um, yeah, so you want to start with, obviously as you've seen, get the first row in, then put the other upright on the ground, that way obviously the glue's not going to run. Uh, start from one end and just creep your way along, knock it in, and then as you line them up, they won't move, they'll line it with a hole and then just go up like that. And then, yeah, as you can see, uh, you're probably gonna need a little bit of help to do this. Doing it by yourself, I can imagine, would be a bitch. So yeah, there we go, so that's it. <clears throat> that's that one done. Just with a paper towel, cloth or rag or something. Now I'm just gonna go and clean up the glue. Uh, this stuff sets clear, but just so it looks nice, uh, I'm going to go ahead and clean it up now. Thank you. Okay, so as you can see, it's sitting nice and square. There's no movement. If, say, for instance, it was sitting up on one side, just on a flat surface, you know, get it flat. Uh, get any twist out of it if it is so it is nice and straight <clears throat> okay so this is the back side uh, of the stall bar I have as you've seen earlier marked the back side um, to have everything pre-drilled I'm gonna go ahead and pre-drill into all the stall bars and fix it with screws you won't see these because these will be against the wall and these are going to ensure that the dowels, that are the stall bars, don't move and are super strong. Let's go. Yep. Perfect. All the way in. Wood doesn't split. So now I'm going to go ahead and do all the rest. And how good are impact drivers? The final part of the assembly before we mount it to the wall, we're going to put the brackets on bottom and top I've just got some small little 90 degree brackets here they're gonna go on the bottom as such so you can see uh, and then that is going to be anchored into the ground and then I have got some these are actual post stirrups that I went and got from the hardware store so when it's sitting upright against the wall, 
they're going to be mounted like that just to give it some extra clearance from the wall because as you can see with your hand like that your knuckles are probably going to graze on the wall depending uh, what you use you could sort of drill them slightly more towards the front but I figured give myself a little bit of extra clearance um, so yeah I've got that one thing you want to do is your brackets are going to be what's holding everything together on the wall so you want to make sure that screwing these in you've got some decent screws holding the brackets uh, to your stall bar so I've gone ahead and found some um, construction screw, screws they're called um, yeah so they're quite large you want a, the biggest gauge screw you can find um, and these the top bit was included free with the screws um, so yeah these are a size 18 so 18 gauge uh, screws two holding the bottom now the bottom is going to be against the floor so the floor is going to be taking most of the support in terms of the brackets on the ground so the brackets will be sitting flush the bottom of the uprights will be against the floor so the bottom brackets really are just to stop it from moving around but uh, you know these brackets are the top especially when you're leaning on it like I built this to do get better at my human flag so there will be quite a bit of uh, strain on the stall bars trying to pull it from the wall and the last thing you want to do is have this come off the wall while you're attached to it so let's go and put on the brackets Okay, so there we go. All the brackets are attached. So now it's time to go and fix it against the wall. All right, so here we are, back in the gym, in its spot. And as you can see, it fits perfectly. So all that's left to do now is to level it up and mark my holes. Uh, I would suggest if you are gonna level it up that you use a spirit level, use a longer one, rather than a smaller, shorter one, just because you're gonna get a better level. With the stall bars now level, it's time to go ahead and mark the holes on the brackets. Okay, just quickly, when selecting your masonry bolts or your wall anchors, they do come in uh, different ratings in terms of strengths. These ones hold up to 360 kilos. Uh, the other ones that were at the hardware store only went up to 60 kilos. So just uh, be aware of that uh, when you're buying them. So these ones are only 50 mil. So I don't blow out the back side of my bricks. Uh, and there's two in each bracket, so you know, 360 kilos each, they're plenty strong enough. And then these ones, the longer ones, have to go into the ground uh, further and just give me more purchase and strength that way. Uh, so there we go. I'll drill these holes. I have drilled the holes for my wall anchors. Uh, I'm just going to have a quick little vacuum tidy up, get rid of some uh, the dust so it's not underneath my stall bars to make cleaning up uh, easier later on. And then I'll go ahead and knock in these wall anchors. Guys, just a quick little tip: if you've never done it before and you're knocking in some wall anchors, sometimes they'll come and you'll see a little bit of thread sticking out of the top. Just screw back the nut enough 
So the thread is slightly recessed, so when you knock it in, you're not going to damage the thread and cross thread it. Let's go. Okay, they're all in, nice and firm. Now we just got to tighten them up. All I'm going to use now is my ratchet and a 13mm socket to fit on my 10mm nuts. And then I'm going to tighten them all up. Fairly tight. There we go. Solid as a rock, I hope. Here we go. The moment of truth. Let's see if I can even do one. Oh, yes! Cool. So there we go guys. A DIY video on how you can make your very own stall bars in your gym. Obviously, this is just a rough guide depending on what room you've got to put it in, you know, whether it, you might have a longer area, um, yeah, or you might have a smaller area. Really, you know, you really don't want to be going much smaller than this anyway just because, I don't know, you need room. And if you are going to make it all the way up to higher where you can do some strict toaster bars, obviously, it needs to be as wide as your body, so, you know, this is probably a good minimum on the size that you want to make your stall bars. So that's it. Uh, let's talk in terms of dollars, how much this costs and how much savings you're going to make. Okay, so for the uprights, they were $20 for the both of them. The most expensive part was the stay bars. They were $90 for three lengths. The brackets were $20. And then for all the fixings was again another $20. This brought the total cost of the project, guys, to... $150. Now I've seen these retail up to $600. The minimum I have seen these for is $300. So at the very least you're going to save yourself half the cost if you make this yourself. Ooh, okay guys, that's it. That's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you like it. If you do like it, give me a like, subscribe to the channel. There'll be some more DIY videos coming and there'll be some more modern day fitness exercises and general shenanigans going. So there we go. If you do make it, let me know, tag me in it. Until next time, see you later.